Welcome back to another KM Canamo update program. I'm Derek Campbell, and today I'm joined by Bushwhacker Museum coordinator Will Tollerton. How are you, Will? I'm doing very well this morning, Derek. Thank you. Yeah, and today we're going to talk about some future programs that you have coming up, and then a little bit of later on in the program, we're going to be talking about some history of Thanksgiving in the surrounding area. So, Will, to start us off here, kind of tell us what we have to look forward to in the future with Bushwhacker Museum. Thank you. Yes, uh, we're very excited to be bringing a full calendar of events back to the community next year. Uh, after having taken a hiatus for the last two years with the pandemic, uh, we've decided it's time to get back to a, a full slate of events. So we are going to uh, kick off the new year on January the 9th, 2022. Our annual meeting and program will feature a musical event and uh, food, traditional food. And it's going to be given, it's called La Guyane. It is a portrayal of a French New Year's custom from the the area around St. Genevieve. Uh, that was an area that was settled by the French in Missouri in the 1700s. And a man named Dennis Stromat, he actually lives in Illinois, but he does, uh, he's a French fiddle tune player. And uh, he is going to do a program for us where he will play music that was traditional, uh, traditionally played around New Year's uh, in that town. And it actually is a tradition that goes back La Guyane to France and medieval times when the young men of the town would go around uh, the community on New Year's Eve, uh, entertaining the young ladies and asking <laughs> for food and drink to uh, for a party. And that actually that tradition has largely died out in France, but it continued on here uh, in America. OK, that that's a pretty fun tradition. And is there anything else kind of recently in the future that you have planned out or is it that's just it so far? Uh, no, actually, in April for our April quarterly program, we will we've invited Carol Davitt. She is the president of the Missouri Prairie Foundation, and she'll be giving a talk about um, the history of Missouri prairies. Uh, as some people may or may not know, Vernon County at one time uh, before the European settlement was largely prairie. Uh, the only timber was perhaps in the far eastern corner of the county and then along the river. So this was mostly prairie territory. And we've had a few prairies restored in various areas, but she'll give that history for us. Uh, the July and October programs haven't been set for sure yet, although we're hoping to have something oriented towards uh, children, kind of a children's program in the summer. Bushwhacker Days will be on Ju June the 11th, and we'll have some historical speakers and programs uh, going on at the museum at that time as well. Well, people will have some events to look forward to starting in the new year with you guys and uh, some fun programs that sounds like too to get the year started or early but uh moving on now we're going to talk a little bit about the history of thanksgiving here now in the nevada area and uh will what do you got for us here for the nevada thanksgiving history okay well the history of thanksgiving as we traditionally know it uh, of course goes back to the early 1600s the Religious separatists, who are commonly known as the Pilgrims, uh, came from England on the Mayflower in September of 1620. And the first Thanksgiving didn't happen in 1620, though. It was actually a year later in 1621. So this year would actually be for the 400th anniversary of the uh, what we typically think of as the first Thanksgiving feast. And that was it was a harvest feast festival uh, celebrated by the pilgrims. And they invited the local Wampanoag chief and uh, Native American tribe to join them in that. So it was you know at that time. Uh, amongst, you know, Western European Christians, days of fasting and thanksgiving were a big part of their existence. And, of course, the pilgrims were a very religious group. Uh, so giving thanks to God for having preserved them uh, for the year and given them a su successful harvest was a big deal. Uh, actually, though, <laughs> not all of them, only half of the original pilgrims who came on the Mayflower actually survived the first winter. So the ones who were left were definitely giving thanks that they had survived because <laughs> about half of their party did not. Yeah, It's uh, nice. to. I did not know that it's been uh, 400 years since the first Thanksgiving has been going on in this country. So that's a fun, nice, fun fact to learn about. But uh, recently, too, I kind of found out, too, that the sweet potato has just recently now become in modern Thanksgiving kind of dish wise that has kind of become a modern thanksgiving dish kind of like let's talk about now some like dishes that have kind of evolved into what they are now for thanksgiving so like probably back in the day didn't have the stuffing or sweet potato dishes or turkey and kind of like talk about what is rumored that was kind of there for the first thanksgiving yes the first thanksgiving feast you know 
we don't know exactly what was on the menu. There's only one real historic source from the journal of, I believe it was Edward Winslow. He was one of the pilgrims, uh, kept a journal, and he mentioned that they went, uh, some of the men went out what they called fowling, which basically means bird hunting, and they brought back fowl of unknown species, but probably at that time period it would have been ducks, maybe geese, uh, tur- wild turkeys, you know, were around, so it's it's conceivable they might have had turkeys, but also since they lived along the coast of Massachusetts, they probably had fish, maybe even seal, swans uh, could have been possible, and then, all of course, deer or venison uh, likely would have been on the menu. Pumpkin pie, probably not. <laughs> uh, the pilgrims probably didn't have any sugar <laughs> at that time, okay. and pumpkins were, of course, a native species squash in the Americas, so pumpkin may have been around, but it's unlikely they, they made them into pies. The All the sweet treats uh, kind of developed later, and of course, the sweet potato was unknown to the pilgrims. Oh yeah, the my favorite sweet pie dish is the pecan pie, and uh, that's and right next to pumpkin pie and pecan pie. That's that's all I need really for Thanksgiving is those two. But kind of moving on here and moving on with traditions now of Thanksgiving. Kind of like what are some traditions that people have gotten from Thanksgiving? Well, the, you know, of course, the idea of giving thanks, it was an original, very religious idea. And the uh, actually the first official Thanksgiving proclamation or well, making Thanksgiving holiday was Abraham Lincoln in 1863. So that's when it kind of becomes a national holiday uh, on the fourth Thursday of November. And it developed over the years, you know, where, uh, you know, family would come together and the big feast, uh, the turkey became popular probably more in the 20th century. (laughs) It's not always been, you know, ham could have been served at one time was more uh, popular. Of course, now, you know, in the, in the 20th century, the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade became big. Watching football yeah. became big in the 20th century and is almost uh, just a common part of the Thanksgiving Day tradition to eat your turkey, eat your pumpkin pie and watch the parade and sit down and watch a football game. <laughs> oh, yeah. The, so seeing traditions kind of evolve from what they were back into the day and kind of to what they are now and potentially what they could be in the future for the next generation of people here, which is always fun to see kind of the evolution of traditions throughout Mm -hmm. history. Yes. And of course, having uh, Thanksgiving becoming the sort of the unofficial, the kickoff of the Christmas season is probably a more recent uh, thing, at least in the 20th century. Uh, One funny or you know, not so funny anecdote about Thanksgiving is that during the Great Depression, uh, President Franklin Roosevelt, he was wanting to uh, prolong the Christmas shopping season for economic reasons during the Great Depression to make people spend more. So he actually moved the date of Thanksgiving up by a week to the third Thursday of uh November, but there was such a backlash and outcry because it had been the fourth Thursday forever that two years later he moved it back. So <laughs> then it became once again, as Abraham Lincoln had proclaimed it, the fourth Thursday of November. Okay, that, that's pretty cool and interesting fact, too, right there. Is there anything else, though, Will, that you'd like to add about Thanksgiving for people to know about? Well, you know, of course, Thanksgiving, it hasn't been celebrated continuously since uh, 1621. You would say, I would say it was, oh, you know, 400 years. But really, the pilgrims probably didn't call it Thanksgiving. They were giving thanks, to be sure. But, uh, you know, they didn't necessarily think of themselves as starting a tradition like that. The actual tradition of celebrating Thanksgiving really is kind of revived in the 1800s, especially during the Civil War. But there was a lady named, I think her name was Josepha Hale. She was a women's journal author during the 1800s. And she campaigned in her journal editorializing for decades, encouraging uh, people to celebrate Thanksgiving. And in her journal, she also happened to uh, include recipes for things like pumpkin pie (laughs) and, and turkey and so on. So that's part of where some of our traditions come from is you know that effort to really have a a a national day of thanksgiving uh before the civil war we had you know states would have days of thanksgiving so like new york had a day of thanksgiving in 1817 but it's really during the civil war and abraham lincoln trying to reunify the country around a single national holiday like that that it sort of really begins to take on the form of what we think of today 
Well, thank you again, Will, for joining me today and talking about the history of Thanksgiving with the traditions and the evolution of what we've seen with dishes also part of Thanksgiving and giving us a little rundown of what to look forward to in the future with the Bushwhacker Museum. Thank you. Yep. We're very excited. Looking forward to 2022. That was Will Tollerton, Museum Coordinator with Bush... Uh, that was Will Tarleton, Museum Coordinator with Bushwhacker Museum, and I'm Derek Campbell here on another K&M Update program. Thank you for listening.